Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. I have a Mercedes Sprinter here. Doesn't sound very nice. As you can see there, it's idling high. So, it's had the DPF cleaned a few times. Uh, they've replaced the DPF pressure sensor, uh, various other parts, and they don't know why it still keeps coming up with DPF issues, even though the van is idling like that. Okay, so I'm gonna try and correct the idle. Uh, not that it's gonna work, but we're just doing like a teaching process. Um, just gonna wait for this to finish. So this is just showing you the each cylinder and how many corrections are performed. Now there is a problem on cylinder two. We'll go back and have a look at that in a minute. Sorry, I just started a little bit halfway through the video here. I was just having a look over it before I decided if I was gonna make a recording. But uh, this one is a little bit of a, well, how would you say, unbelievable, I suppose. Um, he's had various people trying to fix the DPF issue, uh, replacing sensors, oxygen sensors, temperature sensors, EGR valve, the DPF pressure sensor. Um, and each time we get in the van, the idles increase and it says it's trying, DPF is, is getting, getting clogged. Um, but he's got a cylinder two in balance or something. Uh, I'll have to go back to the code. I'm not sure if you can see from the exhaust there, but the van is smoking. And that has been a constant issue, he's told me. It's always been smoking like that. Uh, but they're trying to fix the DPF issue. Don't know if you can see on camera there, it's smoking quite a lot there. Doesn't look like I can see it on camera, but uh, it's definitely smoking white smoke. Okay, we start it back up. Let's see where we're hiding. The idle has come down. Still got a particle filter message up there, even though it says it's only at 20%, but let's see how it goes. Uh, we'll read the fault codes. Teaching parameters for cylinder two has a malfunction. It's above the permission. So this is this is uh, one of the main codes here for the cylinder two, and then the input for the differential pressure sensor. I'm not sure if that's just because he's he's been changing it. Uh, maybe they haven't reset it. Okay, we've cleared the codes, and this one is not clearing for the differential pressure sensor. So I'm just doing like a teaching process to try and. Uh, adapting that new sensor. He's already put a new sensor in there and then we'll try and clear the codes again. If not, we'll try and get the sensor swapped out back for the old one. Uh, it's likely that the new sensor is just a cheap part and the original one was working correctly, the original Mercedes part. Okay, so that's not worked. The code is still there. Okay, so that's the new sensor. We're gonna put the original one back in there. Okay, so the genuine sensor is back in there, the old sensor. Voila! Okay, we just started the van back up there, so the engine light's gone. Uh, it is idling. No, it's not. <laughs> I was just about to say it's idling normally. Uh, I'm not touching that. Oh, it's gone back down. I'm not doing any force regens or anything like that. Um, let's do another code scan, I suppose. It's, all, it's, it's accelerating up again. I mean, it's, I find it really unbelievable that people are trying to fix their DPF issue um, while they've got this, you know, running issue with the injectors. Um, it's clearly got an, an, an issue with uh, Injector 2 and he's ignoring that problem and just trying to fix the DPF when, in fact, if you just fix this idling issue, um, get the Injector number 2 sorted out, I'm pretty sure these DPF problems will just disappear on their own. Now this DPF's been out of the van twice, cleaned, it's been regenerated a number of times, they've changed all different sensors on the van. Um, but he hasn't mentioned to me even before coming down that the van is doing this, this idling, and they, that he had a fault there with the uh, in, in, injectors. 
I did ask, have you got any other faults? He said, no, it's just a DPF. It's a problem with the DPF. So let's come back out of here and uh, do a re-code scan. So again, got cylinder two, malfunction. The signal is above the limit. So the operating parameters for cylinder two has a malfunction. Hmm. That sounds to me like it's gonna need an injector on number two, or at least pulling the injector out and testing it. Uh, we've got some different options here that we can look at. We can look at the launch database. Uh, let's just do a code search first. See what comes up. Uh, engine runs irregularly and shakes. Sprinter 907. So we might have some sort of TSB here for it. Cylinder 2 is affected in cylinder 6. Fault codes, injectors, combustion, misfires stored in the CDI. Remove the charge air hoses and see if there's any condensation in them. Mm, if there's condensation, you must re must be removed. Check the air filter for ingress fluid. Perform a compression test. Using Zentry. Uh, remove the fuel injectors. Uh, not something I want to do here on the side of the road. Start pulling these injectors out. This guy's just driven... I think he's driven like a couple hundred miles down to have a look at the DPF, so... I'm not going to start ripping these injectors out here. Uh, if he was living locally and he wasn't going to use the van for a few days, yeah, I would suggest doing that. Replace the air charge cooler. Blah, blah, blah. So according to that, it's a well-known issue with these vans. Let's look on the launch database to see what this says anyway. Uh, looks like we have no results found on there. So basically what's happening is he's sitting here and he keeps resetting the DPF and whatever but this is what happens, it idles up like that and the DPF percentage keeps increasing up to 150%. Um, but yeah, it's, this is not a DPF issue as far as I can see. Um, some people can't get their head around that because they say what do you mean it's not a DPF issue, my DPF's getting blocked but it's, it's, your DPF is not the cause of the issue. Um, this is getting is being caused by this issue with the fuel injector. Um, now that looks to me like it's going to take a few hours of pulling out the charge air cooler, pulling out the injectors, testing them. Um, something I've not seen before on these. So this guy has has to drive this van home. So I'm not going to rip it apart right here. So this van is getting recommended over to a friend of mine who's got a garage there to put it in and. If the van needs to, you know, you need to take stuff apart, the van might need to be sat in the garage for three or four days. Uh, I don't want to start ripping stuff apart here in the car park. Um, he came to me for a DPF. Um, I've got more appointments in the next hour. Um, I've got maybe three more DPFs to do today, so I can't take his van apart. Um, and I don't have injector testers here, you know. Uh, so it's not really ideal for it's not really ideal job for a mobile mechanic especially the guy who doesn't live around here if if he lived local you know possibly i could pull these injectors out um pull the charge air air cooler off and clean that out if need be but not a job that i'm interested in doing here in a, in a car park while the guy lives 200 miles away um so we'll uh, finish it up on that i think maybe Sometimes I don't really put I don't really usually put these type of videos on unless I'm fixing a problem, but you never know, maybe it might help people in the future. See you in the next video.